this guy is one of the reasons why the startup scene here in Fallberg is existent. Throughout his journey, it was all about bread, sliced bread, sourdough bread, and now that bread. Welcome on stage, Jodok. I'm excited to be at Worker Conference 2021. My name is Jodok Batlok, and I'm an entrepreneur that is working right now on a new climate tech startup. Previously, I've been engineering manager as CTO, but also an engineer coder at the very beginning of my career. And I've been often asked about what is the most important success factor when building a company and also when working with a team. And to me, the answer is pretty simple. It's all about learning. It's constant learning from the very first baby steps you take until you do more advanced stuff. You're creating whatever crazy software. It's, you have to start at the beginning. And that's what's called, also from the Japanese Aikido, the shoe, shoe level, where you are protected, where you obey. Think about the fairy tales. Hansel and Gretel, they walk the path. You've been told, you follow exactly the path something good will happen. If you leave the path, maybe not so good stuff will happen. If the bread is in the oven and if it's ready to take, you should take it out. This is like the ethics, the operating system that you, that you learn. I was thinking about how did I actually learn coding? Not just math in school, but the real stuff, the things that you could not learn in school. It's like if you want to be ahead of your time, you need to learn stuff that you can't just learn in a traditional environment. And so the, the books you could buy and you had software in there that you have type. You were just following exactly the path. It was the shoe. It was the exact thing and you typed the code. And after that, you had your solitaire game. And to me, I think I learned most about coding and software engineering when I was part of the Zope and Clone community. And one of my greatest mentors was Zwork, Philip Auersberg, a legendary core developer of the Zope and Clone application server. I've been sitting for hours next to him and just watching his commits, watching how he codes, watching how he wrote the line, how he typed back, how he deleted it, how he refactored the code. And it was just by watching and by following him and also his exact instructions what to do. I remember my first software that I contributed was a registry for some uh, content types you could do. And by line, line by line, he kind of told me exactly how to do. And at some point, I was a little bit more confident. I, could, I was able to detach a bit, to digress from the path. Think of Hansel and Gretel. At some point, they maybe they go small through a small loop that is a that is a shorter path through the forest, and it's still safe, and uh, it's uh, they're getting more efficient. They're learning. A very good example is also cooking. In the shoe level, before you just start with the following a recipe. You take this amount of eggs, you take this amount of sugar, you take this uh, temperature in the oven, you leave the cake in there for a couple of minutes, for exact amount of minutes, and you have a cake. It's magic. In the half phase, you start to separate from that. You start to do your own stuff. And if I think about back to Zwark, um, it was the first time when I actually started to modify some code that I learned from him or that there was uh, some of his programs where he maybe could be something improved. Pair programming is a really good thing where you are exploring, where you're taking new path and someone is ne sitting next to you and giving you feedback or you have a sparing partner where you're not alone in this, in, in, in this, in the, in this, pro uh, in this process. So I really encourage you to do these, to do these sessions. It's not just about some people tell, oh, it's inefficient if two engineers are coding at the same time. No, it's about learning. It's creating better, better software. 
think like in billiard. At some point, the first time you do it, you are happy if you can hold the curve, if you're happy you can hit the ball. But then you start to do a little bit variations, you start new, new moves. And the more and more you detach, the more and more you're confident, you're even going to a higher level. It's like you're separated from the thing. Think of Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama is just there. You can feel his presence. He knows how to how to how to how to do how to do things. And in coding, it's actually pretty pretty similar. At some point, you're mastering it. You can you can build architectures. You can build more complex uh, complex things. You don't need the exact recipe. You have a vision of what you're going to build. You take some ingredients by in cooking. You look in the fridge, you cook something. And in the Plone soap community, it was fabulous at these hackathons where all these people were together and you had all levels. You had these, these masters, you had the juniors. And at some point you were also at the position where you could give input to others. You knew how to code. But at some po point, you were even at the point where you could give them more instructions, where you have a little bit like the wizard who could tell it. And that level, you, you can feel it uh, or you know it. It's even more detached. It's called the Kokoro. It's called the essence. It's the heart of what you, of, of what you do. So in this community, uh, we had really blessed people. And if you follow their careers, they are now in very high positions at Google. They've created amazing stuff at Mozilla. They, they, they did security stuff you cannot think of. But how did they do it? It was about them totally releasing and just being. It was like really these mornings after these coding sessions, we were rolling down the hills our heads just empty and we were just there and doing it and to me uh phil he was one of the people who could live it he kind of totally detached uh, detached detached from it and coming back how to grow people how to grow people in the in the company is giving them the time trust the process the juniors or even me as an expert level, if I learn something new, like I just recently did when I learned kite surfing, never did it in my life. I was just following the instructions. I, I did exactly as been told. I did not try to, to run the loop initially. I was just doing the initial steps uh, as, as, we, as, we, as, as we spoke. And I was patient. It was just small piece by small piece. The second step is to detach, to digress, to start exploring, start making mistakes, and also get the feedback from these mistakes. So you remember the pair programming sessions come in at this point, and also other feedback uh, feedback things. This is also maybe not the most efficient thing, but still it's very important to learn. And don't forget, you should not stick at this level. You maybe should detach further where you're coming to the master level and where you maybe need to leave the process at all at some point, because process is, of course, helping you to some level. But at some level, you should break with the process because otherwise you're stuck not at the optimum. And also you're maybe not making advances that are advancement that are uh, that are that are that are really needed. But at some point, also try even to go more into into mastery and also help the people in the lower level to reach it the kokore level the essence the heart level i think this is the most desirable state because you're able to teach other people in the most efficient way you know what the small uh, shoe steps are a kokoro master someone who is living it with his heart he can create the small steps that are needed for someone to start by just following the instructions. And this is also letting loose even more, where you start compared here in the agile methodologies. You just code. We started, we had no process. We just were typing listings from a computer magazine. At some point, you did your first Scrum course. You did a certified Scrum master, product owner, or 
uh, whatnot, and you are experimenting with Kanban, Lean, extreme programming. But at some point, you can't even tell you're just doing it and you're creating stuff. But uh mastering the basics and reducing it to the max leaving away all the stuff that is not necessary this is the kokoro step and no matter what level you are you're responsible for the people in the lower sta lower stages and even someone is not just as a whole in a person in one state it depends so much on the skill that you're that you're learning and if you're learning skills that cannot be learned somewhere in school or whatnot, really try to follow this path and also uh, uh, also in, in go up the ladder, but also let loose at the end at the end of the ladder. Because if like in fairy tales, we're always only following the path that we've been told, and we do exactly as we've been said. If we take out the bread. If it's ready, if you're taking the fruits, if, if they're ready, we're not getting anywhere. So that's why we should just fuck the bread because the bread is over. It's about exploring new things. It's about letting loose. And it's also about helping others to advance. Thank you so much.